Hi, I'm Christine Cushing and welcome to my kitchen where we make fun, feel-good recipes that connect us all. I'm sensing that you're ready to take it up a notch. And burger season is in full swing, so you need a great burger bun. Today, we're gonna make a brioche burger bun without butter. Let's go. It's gonna be super exciting. Okay, step one is we're gonna make what's called a pre-ferment or a poolish. So in this bowl here, I have a small amount of flour, a little bit of warm milk, and some instant yeast. So instant yeast, I've talked about this before. This is gonna go straight in to your dry ingredients. And I'm just stirring it together just to blend it. And now I'm gonna add just a kind of tepid body temperature milk to this. Equal amounts flour to milk. Remember, full recipe is always below the description of the video. So you're gonna get all the details, not to worry. So I'm stirring this up just until it's blended, really. And then I wanna cover that up and let it sit until the yeast becomes active for about 30 minutes or so. And it's gonna start looking like this. So the idea of the pre-ferment, because we are taking it up a notch, I want to give you a little bit more technical info here, is that this is going to improve the flavor of your bread. And because we're making an enriched dough, there's a lot of fat in this bread, and that's going to impede the yeast. So this little extra step here really helps it, the yeast to activate nicely. Okay, so that's my pre-ferment, or poolish, a lot of words today. So now in the bowl, I've got all-purpose flour and I'm using kosher salt. So flour and salt come together. Again, you notice I always separate flour or salt, I should say, and yeast to protect the yeast from really dying on contact there. Now, next step. All right, here I have a little bit more milk. So this is what's called an enriched dough. There, there isn't actually any water. All the moisture is in the form of fat, milk, olive oil. Did I tell you about that? Did I tell you this is gonna be all olive oil? I didn't even mention it. So three eggs going in and blending with my milk. The last ingredient that's gonna go here with these wet ingredients is just a little bit of honey. And that's gonna give it some sweetness, also a bit of color. And I'm gonna just whisk this together really so that it takes less time to blend in my stand mixer. Now it's time to bring all the wet to meet the flour. So in is gonna go the poolish or the pre-ferment. Look at that baby. It looks like a science experiment, doesn't it? I wanna make sure I get all of that. And then the egg mixture. Also going in. And now it's blending time. I want to work on a low speed, low to medium here. This first step is really to just blend those ingredients together. So let's talk a little bit about brioche and what's so phenomenal about it. Of course, brioche, very French, and traditionally it comes further from the north where the butter is amazing. If you've never had French butter, you haven't lived. I mean, it's ridiculous how good French butter is. But as you go to the south of France, olive oil is much more prevalent. So really France is like two countries. When you go to the north, you feel like you're in, let's say, Scotland. When you go to the south, you feel like I could be in Greece or Italy or Spain. So now we're gonna make this brioche without any butter, more in a Provençal style, which is only olive oil. Yes, olive oil makes a phenomenal brioche. I think you're gonna love it.
The one bit of technical advice I want to give you, because bread can be really super challenging. I've taken out about two tablespoons of the flour. I'm using all-purpose organic flour here. The only reason I'm doing that is depends on the humidity in the air. All flours are different. So if I feel that the dough is too sticky, I'll add that. But if I add it, it's going to be too dry and then I'm going to have to start adding liquid and it's challenging. So that's a good precaution. Now that it's all come together, I want to do one little thing just to kind of check, do I want to add any more flour? I'm going to just put my hand in here, okay? And it looks a little bit sticky, but it's all come together. So now what I'm going to do is just let it rest. Oh look, I have a little bit of the ferment here, making sure I blend it all. I just want to let it rest for two to three minutes, just so that dough is going to relax a bit and then it's going to be a bit more pliable, okay, before we go to the next phase, which is really working it to build that protein. Because the thing about a brioche is you need to build all of that protein and really, really beat it well before you start adding the fat. Otherwise, it won't have that beautiful satiny texture that we need. Three minutes. So a few minutes later, again on low speed, I'm going to now start bringing this together. And you can see the texture is different. Now this phase here, super important. You want to work this longer than you think you actually need to. So I'm going to move it to a medium speed and this could take up to 10 minutes, but we'll keep an eye on it. So just adding a touch of flour just to make sure that the sides, all of that dough kind of moves in. Again, it feels like when you look at it, is this going to work? Is this coming together? But it is. Don't worry. Okay, so now it's come together. Also, a great tool to have is this little pliable pastry scraper because you can actually scrape down the sides just to make sure you get it all. Okay, this is the texture. You see how it looks super, looks like it's been worked really well. Okay, I just wanted to show you what that looks like. It's just a little bit tacky, but completely looks like it's pulling away from the sides, right? So now it's time for the olive oil to go in there. Let's do a little preamble. If you're going to make a brioche, just like with butter, if you're going to use olive oil, it's got to be a good quality olive oil. So for me, it's an olive oil that I would put on a salad. Great flavor because great olive oil, when it's blended with eggs and it's in this bread, is going to be so sweet, you can't believe it. So a little bit, probably a quarter at a time, low speed, in is going to go the olive oil. Probably in four batches. Now when you look at that, it looks like there's no way that that's ever going to blend. It looks like not a chance. So you have to be a little bit patient. What is happening here is similar to when you're making cream puffs or shoe pastry. You add the eggs and it looks like the whole thing's separating and then it comes back together again. So that's what you're looking for. So two or three minutes later, it looks like it's absorbed most of that olive oil. I'm going to go in with another quarter again. So you see that? We still have some olive oil kind of seeping out, right? And it still looks, I mean, it's coming together, but it still looks like, oh, is this going to be a mess? But now check this out. And now it's the olive oil spa. Check it out. Smell. Look at the color of that from the eggs and the honey. Oh, it's so good on the hands. So 
let's talk a little bit about the flour that you're using because here I used an all-purpose flour. You can use an all-purpose flour. It's ideal to have a bread flour, but I wanted to make it with all-purpose because it's easier to find it. But depending on where you are in the world, if your flour and your wheat is soft, you might want to go with a bread flour. You cannot make this with a soft flour because you're not going to develop enough structure. Look already just a couple of turns and what's happening here. Look at that. It's already starting to feel great. I mean, really, do you need to go to the gym? Not a chance. Oh, it feels so fantastic. And what flavor does this olive oil versus the butter bring? Surprisingly, it's quite sweet. Because I'm using here, what a surprise, spoiler alert, Greek olive oil. But I love Greek olive oil, not only because I'm Greek, but in Greece, there are many, many varieties of olives. But some of the varieties that are used to make olive oil are just perfect. They're not too bitter, they're not too peppery, they just have this perfect round, you know, they do have that beautiful, fresh grassiness and the pepperiness, but they don't have a lot of bitter notes. So they make for a great baking olive oil, actually. Check it out. Look at that. We're almost there. What looked like a total mess is now almost fully incorporated. Perfection. Look at that. Okay, that is a perfect brioche dough. Now the key is to let it rise. Are you ready to see it? Look at that baby. Oh, it's bubbled. Oh, wow. Oh. Look at this. Is this a pillow or what? Who wants to make some buns? I do. I need my scraper. This is a metal scraper now that I'm gonna divide the dough. So I calculated this is making eight good size buns. It can make 16 sliders. Oh, this dough is ridiculous. I'm eyeballing it, as you know I love to do, but if you're not good at that, you maybe wanna measure these out, weigh them out. So I'm gonna try and you can't even imagine how phenomenal this is. So eight absolutely perfect burger buns. Tuck the four corners in. We just want to create a little ball. Okay, and then create a little bit of tension. Again, you can see I don't need any flour because this has a beautiful amount of oil in it. It's just the perfect texture and that is how you create that. Who's got money on me for these being even size? Like sourdough, airy, fluffy bread or bread that's gonna have holes, you want this to be completely even inside. It's gonna have a beautiful, fine texture. This should not have holes in it, right? So you just wanna make sure it's even. That's why I'm also bursting these little bubbles. It proofed a little bit too much, but they're gonna be fantastic regardless. By the way, you can make this the day before and proof it or let it rise in the fridge. Again, if you want to do that, you can also freeze them. You can freeze them at this stage so that then when you want to make fresh brioche burger buns, you just pull them out, thaw them, bake them, boom, you're golden. Golden, get it? All right. Parchment lined baking sheet. I'm going to give them some space to expand. Okay, the next phase is again they need to proof until they double. It might take 
40 minutes to an hour. I want to make sure I cover them so they don't get a skin in a draft-free place. It's getting exciting. You want to see? This is my beautiful little glaze. One egg plus one yolk. You ready? 45 minutes later, ta-da! Look at these beauties. So the key to a great brioche, they want to be dark, dark brown with a super, super sheen. That's why I always do an egg plus a yolk. Now I want to give them a beautiful topping of this. My oven is set 375, that's a Fahrenheit setting, fan. Okay, they're super polished. Now, these have to be buns that are perfect for the most spectacular burger in the world. Whatever burger you're gonna put, this will be the best bun you've ever had. So I wanna give it a little sesame on top for a bit of texture, color, interest. You don't have to do this, but they look really cool with the sesame. 375, 25 to 27 minutes, lower third of the oven, it's gonna be a thing of beauty. Who can stand it? That's all I'm saying. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. I want to cool them down for just a bit. Did I promise you the most amazing bun ever? Look at it. Okay, I'm going to cut it open for you. They're still warm, obviously, but I've let them cool down just so I can cut them. Look at what I'm talking about. Do you see that? Is that a bun or is that a brioche bun? I mean, look at that, it's picture perfect, right? The reason that I wanted you to master this beautiful brioche bun with olive oil is that I can never find a great bun in the store. They're too small, they're too big, they're too dry, they're too crumbly, they're too hard. This is perfect, so I'm like, I'm making my own bun and I'm sharing it with you and you're gonna love it. Now let me taste it. Oh, does this ever look phenomenal. Wow. The amazing thing is, is I could just take some jam and put it on here and it would taste phenomenal. The olive oil has such a surprising flavor in here when it blends with everything in the eggs. You would not even know that this doesn't have butter. I'm, I'm serious. Thank you so much for joining me again from my kitchen. Hope you enjoyed the buns. Let me know how it's going in your kitchen. Let me know what you want me to make. Please try the buns, subscribe, thumbs up. Please let me know what's happening. I really love to hear from you and letting me know what you want me to cook, how things are going, how you like things. See you next time very soon.